begins with chapter 15 of the 8th canto and goes on to chapter 23 and about 300 pages of description. It starts off with the description of Bali Maharaj who performed a, a massive yagya called Vishwajit Yagya a sacrifice by which he could become Jit victorious over the whole universe Vishwa and he received so many benedictions and paraphernalia from that Yagya that would enable him to conquer the demigods chariot and all kinds of weapons while all these Blessings, he immediately attacked King Indra of heaven. All the demigods then left the heavenly planets and assumed different bodies. Kama Rupinam. Kama Rupinam. Demigods have the ability to change their form at will. Demigods were advised by their guru, Vihaspati, that they would not be able to win if they challenged the demons so they, they left. In a previous battle with the demigods, Bali Maharaj actually lost his opulence and died in the fight. But his guru, Bali Maharaj's guru, the, the guru of the demons, Shukracharya, he brought Bali Maharaj back to life And as a result, Bali, Rad, Bali Maharaj became a disciple of Shukracharya and served him with great faith, offering everything he had. Chapter 15 describes the beauty of Indra Loka, the Nanda, Nanda Kanana forest, and so many beautiful ladies and beautiful streets and golden doors and so much opulence. And verse 18 describes Sura Sri Keshavi Brashta Navasogandika Shrajam. says that the flowers, the breeze that was blowing in the streets through the city was carrying the wonderful sweet fragrance of the flowers falling from the hair of the demigoddesses. And on Acharya in the 10th canto, he explains, possibly on the basis of this verse, he says that when there's repeated references to the demigod showering flowers upon Krishna after he kills a demon, those flowers are actually falling from the hair of the Sura Sri Kesha Vibrashta. These are falling from the hair of the demigoddesses that are watching Krishna's leelas in their flower airplanes above Braj. The demigods were amazed, especially Indra, how the demons got so much power to defeat them. Rihaspati, the guru, he said that what happened, the Brahmana the descendants of Brigamuni, they endowed him with his spiritual power. So Balimraj's power was not actually his own, but that was the power of his exalted guru, Shukracharya. Prabhupada explains in text 28, and by the Parampara system, Guru, Shishya, line of Guru and Shishyas, one can be endowed with the original spiritual power coming from God. Evam Parampara Praptam, Imam Rajarshayu Vidu. And what is this power? What is the nature of this power? It's described that this power is Brahma Teja Samaditam. 
This is the power that was bestowed upon Bali Maharaj. Priyaswati therefore advised Indra and his demigods, O oh Indra, you and your soldiers cannot conquer the most powerful Bali. Not even God can conquer him, because now he's equipped with Vrama Teja. This was showing that by the mercy of Guru, Guru Kripa, a disciple can receive so much power to serve the Lord and benefit other people by preaching, distributing Krishna consciousness. What actually happened in this Leela, although Bali Maharaj, he risked defining the, defying the orders of his Guru, Shukracharya, and as a result, he lost all his property. And because he was a devotee and expressed devotion to the Lord Vamanadeva, it said in, in the future, in the eighth Manmantara, he actually occupied the throne of Indra again. It's mentioned in one purport.